right, what's going on, y'all? All right, so this is the video before the video. Now, I'm about to do the biggest job on this car, all right? And that is pretty much changing out the catalytic converter tomorrow. So the next thing you'll see is me and my homie changing out the catalytic converter. So let me just give you a little history lesson on these Nissans, man. They got some bullshit ass catalytic converters. I'm sorry, I don't care what nobody say. That's all I buy. And I already know if your car is over 100,000 miles, nine times out of 10, you're probably selling it because the catalytic converter is bad because it's a Nissan. And I bought it. <laughs> I can't miss with bad catalytic converters. So I already know what the game is. My M45, um, bad catalytic converters, you know, to, after a week of buying it. Now, granted, that came with 200,000 miles on it and they would never change. So, I mean, of course, they're not forever. But I, I, I've seen some cars that last a little bit longer with catalytic converters. Um, some Nissans, 100,000 miles, maybe 90,000 miles, catalytic converter goes bad. Um, if anybody knows about anything about these catalytic converters, they're not cheap. You know, uh, I think the cheapest one I saw, that was a OEM dealership catalytic converter was about $1,200 each, and I need two of them, okay? Uh, I kept looking. <laughs> There's no way I'm paying $1,200 uh, for one catalytic converter, $2,400 for just two cats, and I just bought the car. So, looked around some more, got a great deal on them. Um, if y'all interested, I can put the link in the description if you're in the same boat as me. Um, that's all I pretty much get my parts from. I don't want to throw them up there because they ain't paying me nothing for that so you know what i mean we ain't gonna do that but i will say i always bargain hunt and i always look for the best quality in bargain hunt. you can't just go out and go to ebay because they did have them on ebay for about 240 for two that's not a good idea okay the reason being i've been in that boat before you get them they're like one bolt missing or one bolt doesn't line up and they were like, oh, I thought you meant the M35 and it was the sport and no, it's not the, yeah, I've been in that boat before, please don't do that. Um, buy good quality for back for the good price. So um, the next thing you're gonna see is us removing the cats. It's a total of, uh, I'll say five and a half bolts, but there is one bolt that's attached to a bracket, I saw. Um, the steps are very similar to the M37. Um, as far as space and you know uh getting to the bolts and what bolts there are there are five major bolts that are locked in two in the back three at the top so um we're gonna be hitting it tomorrow so see you soon right under the car first two bolts there's the cat right there in the back those two bolts and then that's the other bolt right there connected to the bracket uh, as you can see on the other side same thing there's two bolts right there on that cat. And then three. In there somewhere. All right, we got the bracket removed. And there's a nut right there for the bracket. Yo, you can keep that in and slide it out. Or you got to take the bracket on the other way out. Which one? So it's gonna help the bracket. Yeah, right here got them out. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So, then next we'll get these bolts right here. I probably should spray that down one more time. This is real tight. <laughs> I mean, it, the set I got came with new bolts. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, you know, you know what? It's gonna be the easy part. I'm telling you, now, it's gonna be easy. These bolts gonna come right out easy. It's gonna be something hard, something simple, like lining it back up. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> That's gonna be the issue. It's gonna pop right out, come right out. So stay tuned, I'm gonna add update to this and uh, let's see where we are. Also, that's the that's the bit right there from the bottom. That should be easy to get to right there. Yeah. Oh. And then that's the bolt from the top right there. The battery? The starter right here. Oh, the starter's in the... Oh, okay. I just took the negative one off. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. All right, so, yo, we got oh, the... Uh, 
We got the back bolts loose. Well, I'm gonna change up the starter and alternator eventually. That's gonna be another video. Yeah. Uh, so we got those two back bolts loose. Um, two bolts on that side, plus the two in the back are loose. One more at the top, and then that's it. That'll drop. And then we're working with this one right here. It's got a funky little angle on it. So, once you get these bolts loose, this thing will drop. Now, keeping in mind, this is very similar to the G37. So, if you're looking at any G37 um, videos on how to replace the cats, it's exactly the same. Um, bracket, five bolts, that's it. All right, the old versus the new. It's the old man cat right here. Just pull that bitch out. All right. And this is the new one. Uh, I can see that they're very different. My homie's pulling out the other side right now. This is the passenger side. But they pretty much line up as far as the holes go and everything. And uh, they seem to be the same length, even though one looks thicker than the other. Oh, they sent me some studs. Sent me new studs right here. And this stud is supposed to go in the back right here. Uh, no, like this. All right. These studs that they sent me don't go in the holes. So the studs they sent me don't even work for their own product. So uh, I had to remove one of the studs from the original uh, cat I use that one and then I'm using these right here now I know it's thinking it's loose as long as I get a nut on this side and on this side and tighten them down with two ratchets real tight as long as this is flush we got the gasket on it I'm not gonna have any leaks so this right here works pretty good if you're in a situation make sure you buy some extra studs just in case because uh, yeah I was stuck but the stuff they sent me so being on my back for the whole entire day, well not the whole day, I realized that I had a, uh, my boy over here just told me that my transmission is pain, so it's leaking, so the gasket is bad. And you can kind of see it right there, the gasket kind of bulging right there. It's leaking from right there, so my man just put that out to me. Uh, next video is gonna be the transmission uh, gasket change and complete the whole pan's gonna come down and the fill right there that's the fill plug and that's the uh, drain plug so we'll cover all that in a minute i'm gonna try to snug this up for the time being just to make sure i'm not losing no fluid while driving but uh your, your nuts should not look like that juicy and dripping that's a telltale sign that you leak your transmission fluid um got this one side in no gaps, everything's nice and tight. Alright. And uh like I told you, my idea worked with the uh two bolts, the stud that was wobbly in there. As long as it fits through the hole, and you got two nuts on both sides, crank them shits down, tighten that up, pull it together, it's flush, got a gasket in there, it's no leaks, no problems. We're working on that side right now, getting the O2 sensor back in. And I'm gonna get up top and actually put the top bolt in too. All right, stay tuned, it is nighttime. I am exhausted. I just reset the check engine light. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna y'all, tell y'all what happened. And um, it's gonna be one old video. Uh, so basically, um, got the old cats out. Um, that wasn't even the issue. Getting them out, no problem. They came out pretty easy. Uh, once you crack the nut, you know, you're pretty much out of it. Um, <clears throat> the one on the driver's side probably was the easiest by far because getting the bolt from by the engine bay where the um, air duct is, that top bolt, pretty easy, straight on, you can get to it. Um, the two bolts at the bottom and even the two up top, that can be gotten from the floor. So you can get that out pretty easy. Um, I didn't put back, I didn't put back that bracket because <clears throat> on the original cats, there's a bolt that stays in place. You gotta bend it out to get it out and everything else. I didn't feel like being bothered. So I just left the bracket out and uh, the cat, the um, O2 sensors are 
hanging up, so it's not in the way. Honestly, I don't know what that bracket really is for. Um, didn't really serve a purpose, for me too, honestly. Um, and so I just moved it, got rid of it. Um, getting them out pretty easy. Putting the new ones in. Um, you get what you pay for. I'm gonna say it like that because um, all the studs they sent me were trash. They did not fit. All right, you had to crank them down into the manifold. We only needed we needed to put three studs in. Okay, we only sent two two studs that's it so i guess they really wanted you to reuse the studs from the previous you know um equipment um that's when i got crafty and i said okay i'll just put a bolt through that stud that didn't fit like i showed it earlier in the video it tightened down both sides for the nut and that worked perfect amazing okay um get two ratchets you crank it locked it in um that worked well to lock in the two bolts in the back um the two bolts up top i had to use, the three bolts up top i used the original bolt i didn't use anything they gave me all the bolts they gave me did not screw into the mouth so <laughs> beware okay if, if you're going to do this job i would suggest buy some extra bolts just to be on the safe side some extra studs just to be on the safe side some universal stuff so that way you can be creative because you can be creative down there as long as you don't have any gaps uh, you don't want any leaks you don't want any gaps um, so you can be creative as long as you don't have any spaces okay um, let's get to the driver's side which I feel is more difficult um, the two bolts on the back of the manifold those two bolts were a headache because the manifold that they that the cap they sent me those two bolts in the back, it seemed like the plate was kind of crooked. And this is what I mean, where you have to play with them sometimes. So we had all these bolts in except for one. And we had to loosen up all the bolts just to play around with the damn cat, to move it around and shift it to get the bolts to go in, right? You're gonna have to do that sometimes when you loosen up all your bolts, shift everything, and sort of um, get everything lined up and then bolt everything in. Uh, but once we did that, finally, two hours worth of shifting and moving and moving and all that finally got the bolts in finally got the uh, the uh, spaces and the, and the gaskets in the place um, everything was good everything lined up perfectly um, keep in mind when you put everything back together and you start the car it's gonna smell like you baking and burning bread okay that's normal okay you're gonna see the smoke coming out of your car like a chimney and it's gonna smell like burnt grease and burn everything okay that's normal don't be alarmed <laughs> the cat's just heating up you got grease and everything on the, on the cat um that's burning off uh all that good stuff is being burnt for the first time so this normal process just go with it um got in the car started everything up i put some miles in the car already just now drove for a little bit went around the corner um the car's good Car's running pretty smooth. I don't have any leaks. I don't hear any leaks. Um, with the cat that I took off, I think there was a hole somewhere in it or it was broken down or something because every morning when I came outside, I heard a leak. And just now when I started the car up and came out to drive the garage after I fixed everything, I didn't hear anything anymore. So I'll see in the morning when I started up if it sounds smooth from beginning to end, or if I still hear some type of form of a leak. But um, this sounds pretty good. Car's actually moving a little faster. Before I noticed a hesitation in the speed, and I had a rotten egg smell in the car. Um, the rotten egg spit smell left because I put some stuff in the fuel tank, but I felt the hesitation a lot. And today I just drove it around to Walmart, came back home, ran down the street a couple times, came back to the house. I don't feel the hesitation anymore so maybe it's gone i'll know better during the course of the week and i'll keep you guys posted and post anything up if i feel anything different but uh it just is a job that uh requires you to really be on your back all day you know, i'm exhausted right now but if you got any questions comments concerns anything i could have did better you know what i mean hit me up let me know 
and then we can discuss it for, for the chat box, actually. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks.